Modeling, planning, and analyzing air war is what we do. This graphic presentation highlights the three key parts of our vision. Part one is understanding what goes on in an air war and building mathematical models of various phenomena. This understanding is essential to part two, building decision aids and optimization tools so that operators will be able to make better decisions faster. Our focus is on optimization tools to support the allocation of resources and the detailed planning of individual aircraft sorties. These types of problems need to be solved before the mission starts. After the mission begins and circumstances change, it is also important to be able to perform dynamic replanning. This permits responding to new threats or new intelligence about targets. The third part of our vision is analysis. We need to be able to reconsider our plans, our actions, and our concepts of operation. We need tools that will help quantify how good our decisions are. On a higher level, we also need to be able to examine our employment of tools for dynamic replanning so we can answer questions such as, do we have enough operators? Are we solving the right problems? Is enough information being provided in a timely fashion? Is there too much information? It is not enough to understand the static problem. We must also look at the dynamic situation and understand how our tools affect overall effectiveness. Understanding assets and resources is perhaps the first step in understanding the air war concept. There is a variety of aircraft types, fighters, bombers, jammers, and tankers, manned and unmanned, low observable and conventional. Weapons range from air-to-air -air guns, gravity bombs, GPS glide weapons, and sophisticated waypoint missiles with both engines and control surfaces. Knowing the capabilities and limitations of the platforms is essential. In general, political leaders in consultation with military leaders decide what they would like to accomplish during various phases of a campaign. This mission intent is a main driver for the rest of the planning. Based on intent, it is possible to decide which targets should be struck to achieve the desired effects. To eliminate an enemy's air force, one could target aircraft on the ground or simply disable all useful runways. Once the targeteers have selected the desired mean points of impact, DIMPIs, weaponeers can begin to analyze which weapons can be employed to accomplish the desired amount of damage. Some objectives will make the prioritized target list because they are a critical element of the enemy's integrated air defense. The objective might not have any intrinsic value as judged by the overall intent of the campaign, but may be defending a crucial target or corridor needed by the attacking force. Orca has coined the term synergetic effect to capture relationships between targets that are not often formally modeled. By explicitly modeling such relationships, it is possible to model and optimize more effectively. It is the notion of an adversary that makes military planning both difficult and essential. In an air war, it is the integrated air defense system that is the adversary. There are early warning radar systems that alert the network to your presence. The lethal aspects of the defense can be either airborne interceptors or, more likely, surface-to-air missiles, SAMs. The lethal elements are directed by tracking radars, height finders, and fire control systems. The eyes and ears of the IADs may work at various frequencies across the spectrum, including acoustic sensors, visual sensors, infrared systems, or radars using VHF, X-band, K-band, or other frequencies. Understanding individual threat systems and how your aircraft are susceptible to those systems is as important as understanding how the IADs work. The construction of the network, timing delays, and communications links all matter when trying to estimate mission survivability and effectiveness. The allocation problem is deciding which assets should be assigned to which tasks. The Air Tasking Order, or ATO, is used to communicate the overall assignment of tasks to aircraft across the entire force. Sometimes there is a smaller scale problem as well. 
The Force Commander's ATO may specify a set of tasks for a squadron and leave it to the squadron commander to finalize the details of which aircraft will handle the individual tasks. One can imagine a pod of combat air vehicles being assigned a set of imaging and strike tasks. It will be up to the pod operator to make the final pod level allocations. This makes it easier to foster cooperative tasking and eliminate route conflicts. Once the allocation is decided, the task of detailed planning for individual sortie routes remains. This is especially important for low observable aircraft that need to follow Cashin's law. Stealth equals low observability plus tactics. The tactics to make the LO vehicle stealthy come from the detailed planning. Part of the task of the mission planning toolmaker is to provide decision aids that highlight information not ordinarily available. The traversal function of this tool makes the aircraft's radar threat template visible on the computer screen. Any radar on the ground that is highlighted by that template will have the potential to spot the vehicle. Other templates can be used to show where there is the threat of a missile launch or where the vehicle will be able to take required surveillance images or effectively release weapons. In 1899, Lord Kelvin, the English physicist and a mathematician, said, When you can measure what you are speaking about and express it in numbers, you know something about it. But when you cannot measure it, when you cannot express it in numbers, your knowledge is of a meager and unsatisfactory kind. For precisely this reason, it is important to construct quantitative figures of merit to help measure how well we are solving problems in the air war arena. Some of the FOMs that are commonly used include the probability of survival for single sorties, the expected number of weapons on target, which is an effectiveness FOM, and various exposure reports. The first two metrics are often controversial because they both make use of survivability computations which invariably lead to long debates about IADS modeling. Exposure metrics tell a less definitive story but have the advantage of being easier for consensus building. It is important to create FOMs that are relevant to the problems being solved and the group that will use them. The actual battlefield is dynamic. Threat locations, target priorities, and the disposition of assets change constantly. There are often opportunities when new information suggests that a different plan may be more likely to let us achieve our objectives. Fast computing tools are often key to alerting us to such situations. There is a variety of concepts of operation that allow dynamic responses in a changing environment. The source of new information can be an airborne asset or a message from the ground. Computing assets may be airborne or ground-based. The level of autonomy is another variable. The basic issue is analyzing the effect of the change, calculating new plans, and deciding the appropriate course of action. Fast software for planning and monitoring can increase spans of control. Instead of multiple operators controlling one vehicle, it is possible to have a single operator controlling one, two, four, or perhaps even more vehicles. Having tools for dynamic replanning changes everything. The impact is as fundamental as being in radio contact with an airborne pilot. Understanding when and how to best use these capabilities is an essential task for today's military. Mission planning and analysis is essential to make the best use of air power. We must understand the battlefield and the interactions between the various elements. We must understand the operator so that we can design, build, and deliver the decision aids and optimization tools that will make our air forces more effective. Finally, we must provide military analysts with tools and simulation environments that will allow testing and further development of the tools to execute an air war. These tools include the command and control element as well as new platforms, sensors, weapons, and ways to employ them.